Three, two, one, and we are recording. Hello and welcome, everybody. So happy to have you here on the Gonzo Experience. I am David Gonzo Mamano, your host, always bringing you what I strive for is just really incredible uh, thought leaders, guests to help you bring your entrepreneurial game to the next level, uh, trying to get nuggets out of their brain so that you could, uh, at the end of this podcast episode, you could say, wow. I'm walking away with at least one, if not two or three or more things that I could change immediately in the way I do things. And today I have a show, a great guest to help us do that, Drew McClellan. Drew, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Really appreciate you being here. We have been interconnected for a few years through some very good friends. Uh, uh, first and foremost, Stephen Wessner from Onward Nation, who is the man responsible for why I am, uh, have become a podcaster. And I believe you were responsible for giving him the idea to help train people to become podcasters. So what a what a what a great circle there, right? <laughs> it is. Uh, I I think part of business ownership is all about the connections and the interweavings of who we know. So it's always it's always good to connect with people who you know are connected to good people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, yeah, it's just a compound effect of good people, right? So there yep. we go, and right. here we are. So Drew. Um, uh, you know, a little bit about who you are, uh, your journey and, and what you do today to help people. Yeah. So the, the short version of that is um, I left uh, college, got my master's degree in advertising and marketing uh, and started working for agencies. And at the uh, perfect age, uh, I always often say I was the perfect combination of arrogant and ignorant. I was 30 years old, I looked at my boss who owned an advertising agency and I thought, if he can do it, I can do it. How hard can it be? Stepped out on my own and started an agency which still exists today. Uh, so that was 20 some years ago, 26 years ago now. Um, and very quickly learned how hard it is to own a business and sought uh, some counsel specifically around how to run an agency better. And uh, those two, that world converged. So I, I was a part of an organization focused on helping agencies run their business of the business better. Not so much what they did for clients, but how to run the business better. Um, and the guy who founded that business in uh, 2008 or so approached me and said, hey, I want to retire. I think you are the guy to take this business forward. So long story short, after about two years of negotiations, uh, I bought his organization and rebranded it and have really morphed it into Agency Management Institute, which is really a consultancy that helps agency owners run the business of their business better. So we do that through a podcast called Build a Better Agency. Uh, we do that through live workshops. We do that through peer groups of owners coming together and sharing their own best practices and kind of being each other's board of advisors. So I still run my agency and now I run the consultancy that helps other agencies. So those two things sort of fit hand and glove together. I like that because a lot of people that, you know, are running coaching programs, mastermind groups, you know, think th kind of things that you're doing, helping, helping people. Um, they, they kind of leave what made them great. Right. But so right. you're, you're a guy that's actually still running an ad agency yeah. and, and also a separate company helping others run their agencies through best practices, shared experiences, and it, it must sharpen your saw too, right? You're, you're not only the teacher, but you're the student, I would imagine, right? Yeah. So when I, when I bought the company and turned it into AMI, my initial thought was that the agency owners were not going to like the fact that I owned an agency. It was sort of a fox in the hen house situation. But what I found very quickly was they appreciated the fact that I had to stay current because I was doing it too. And so now everybody who consults with our clients on the AMI side has to currently own their own agency still, because honestly, our industry is changing so fast that if you did it five years ago or 10 years ago, your experience as an agency owner is obsolete. And so, yeah, our clients like the fact that we're in the trenches with them and we're having to gut out some of the same things and learn about artificial intelligence and all the other things that agencies are facing today. Uh, so I think it just makes us more credible. Yep. Yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention, I mean, the, the name of your agency is very creatively named the McClellan Marketing Group. I don't know how you came up with that. That's really incredible. Yeah, well, actually, you know, it's funny. So I, I had a, a partner and um, we had a pretty ugly breakup as partners. Uh, as that happens. Owners, and I had 10 days to rebrand the agency. 
And so we didn't have a lot of time to get super creative or whatever. And I wanted our clients to know that I was the partner that was staying. Um, and so it was important at that time uh, to put my name in the, in the agency name, but I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. Uh, right. But in, in our case, it was sort of a, a time was sensitive and B, it was important in the marketplace for me to reassure people that I was the one who was staying. So yeah, yeah. No, that, totally that's how sense. that happened. Yep. Got about your chops because you're an ad agency. You're supposed to be like extremely creative. And I'm sure you are. I know. We should we should have been called like green dotted frog or something. <laughs> I know all these funny yeah. names today, right? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, and, and, you know, here's the pot calling the kettle black, as they say. I just... Uh, launched a new website that kind of is the hub for everything that I do. And I went all out. I really, you know, thought about this for days and weeks, uh, but it's uh, davidmamano.com. So I, I went crazy as well. So. Wow. Yeah. That, thank you. Yeah. Thank I, you I can't even imagine the brainstorming that happened. Oh my God. It was, yeah. it was yeah. very, I can deep. see the wall with white paper and, <laughs> and notes all over it. Yeah. <laughs> it stayed white. It was all yeah. white the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then your, your consultancy is uh, uh, Agency Management Institute. Right. So yep. anybody listening that happens to own a marketing at slash ad agency, uh, if you want to uh, really stay current uh, and, and cutting edge and share experiences uh, with, with other agency owners, that, that's something that they should contact you about. In fact, here in Rochester, New York, where I am, uh, I know two people, uh, Michelle Ashby and uh, Nicole Mahoney, who both own agencies here in Rochester, who are just coincidentally part of your group. And I hear yep. incredible things about it. So that's, uh, you know, kudos to you. Yeah, they are super smart agency owners. So you're, you're fortunate to have them in your market. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah. kicking it. They're, they, yeah. they, they, uh, both uh, uh, Michelle and Nicole are, you, you meet these people, whether they're a, a woman or a man, I mean, it's, you know, they say they're women business owners. I'm like, you know what? I don't care what sex they are. They're just damn smart. Right. <laughs> you know? Yep, absolutely. Yep. Uh, yep. Super smart. And and just good people too. Yep. 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 Doing very, yeah, very good people. So uh, excellent. So most of, oh, so I want to talk about your book, right? So you have okay. a, a brand new book that you just, uh, just released recently, January, 2020 uh, with Stephen Westner, who we were talking about before. Yep. Uh, and his company is Predictive ROI. And he runs a great podcast called Onward Nation which I've been on four times, by the way. So I think that one more, I'm going to get that like that five times celebrity status on Saturday Night Live type I, of thing. You know? I think you get a brass belt buckle. I think I think I get a yeah. robe, a robe and a brass belt buckle. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. I think that's coming <laughs> your way. I'm going to want to see photos of that. Absolutely. You're first on yeah. the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you guys just wrote a book together called Sell with Authority. And, um, and, you know, so I want to you know, have you tell, tell us a little bit about that book and, and how it can help, you know, the Gonzo family here, who is, is you know, very much comprised of, of, uh, of entrepreneurs, uh, medium, small to medium-sized business owners. Tell us about the book and how it can help them. Yeah. So the, the premise of the book is this, is that uh, the art of selling has changed. It used to be, and when we wrote the book, um, and you and I were talking about this before we hit the record button, when we wrote the book, because Stephen's firm helps agencies. And because my focus is agencies, all the examples and stuff in the book are agency centric, but quite honestly, the tactics and the strategies would work for any, any business. So, but the premise is this, that when we think about the way people buy things today, it's different than it was 30 or 40 years ago, where we had to aggressively be the hunter to go find customers because they didn't know about us otherwise. But the reality is today with the internet and everything and social media and all of that, 70 to 75%, and this is especially true if you're in a B2B business or a service industry, like an agency would be, 70 to 75% of the buying decision on the consumer side is made before they ever reach out and connect with any of the prospective providers that they're looking at. So whether it's a law firm or an agency or a business coach or whatever, they're checking us out and they are doing their homework and they're doing their shopping before we even know they're there. And so the reality today is that we have to be findable. And if we're not findable, then odds are we're not going to have the opportunity to even be considered for that opportunity. And so the premise of the book is, how do you establish yourself as an authority on something? So you, every one of us has a specialty in some way. 
You know, if you're an attorney, maybe you specialize in divorces. If you are, you know, a doctor, you may specialize in sports injuries. If you are a consultant like me, I specialize in small to mid-sized agencies. We all have an area of expertise. And what we don't do is we don't share that expertise in a way that makes us findable in a broader sense. And so the book basically outlines this idea that number one, the way we sell today is that we have to be findable and ideally that we have to not just be findable, that we, but we have to be sought after. When you are such an expert and you're so well known and you're giving keynote speeches, whether it's locally, regionally, nationally, you've written a book, you have a podcast, whatever it is, when you are known as an expert and people can find you as an expert, then pretty soon as they're shopping, you become the natural choice for them. So not only are you findable, but you're sought after specifically because of who you are and what you know. And so what it does is A, it attracts the right clients to you and B, it shortens the sales cycle because a lot of that no like trust cycle that someone has to go through to get ready to make a purchase is already done. It's already done in their legwork before they've ever talked to you for the first time. So that's, the book is basically a guidebook of how to execute that strategy. Yeah, that's great. So like, it's like we're saying, it doesn't have to be just with agencies, it could be for any business. Sure. Um, so let's look at an example, you know, so, you know, everybody and their sister is a digital marketing agency these days, right? Like right. when I say that, I mean, you know, the millennial who is, you know, 19, they're in their apartment and uh, they're a digital marketing specialist. And they may be very good. I'm not trying to knock them, but there are, there's a lot out there. There's big agencies, medium agencies, right. solo people working out of their bedroom. Um, so what you're saying is, is don't be so general. Is there, there's, is there kind of a specialty there? Yeah, no. Well, I mean, there may be. I mean, again, he might only service chiropractors. So then he, then he or she would say that their specialty is we are the digital marketer for chiropractors or single solo practitioner chiropractors or chiropractic uh, practices, groups, right? So the, there is, here's, one of the, here's one of the fallacies. People will say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to niche because I'm leaving a lot of money on the table. I want to serve the butcher and the baker and the candlestick maker. Well, the reality is if you are going to serve everyone, number one, you're going to be geographically bound because I'm not going to drive by four general practitioner doctors to get to a fifth general practitioner doctor. But I will get on a plane to go to Mayo Clinic. If I have a brain tumor, I will get on that plane, right? And so that the specialty, when we think about how we shop, we want somebody who has a depth of expertise, who understands our jargon and our world. So uh, a knit, So there's three elements that are required for you to become an authority, right? The first one is that you have a niche and a niche is either an industry we serve, for example, solo practitioner chiropractors. A niche could be an audience like, you know what? We understand how to reach millennial moms better than anybody else. Another way you could niche is in a very specific service industry. So like you do, like all we do are um, six figure divorces, right? That's all we do is that we have a very narrow window of who we serve. And the fourth one is that we solve the same problem for everyone. So in the agency world right now, uh, a lot of agencies are enjoying the, val the upside of being a specialist in Amazon marketplace. Like we know how to put a client in Amazon marketplace and help them just sell the bejesus out of their product, right? So some of, so that's number one, you have to be niche. Number two, you have to have a point of view. You have to understand, have a, a lens by which you look at the business that you do that makes you different than everybody else. And the third part is, and this is really where the book um, puts a spotlight is you, an expert, someone who's really an authority is a frequent and generous teacher. They are constantly sharing what they know because they know that they're not going to run out of stuff. And they also don't live in fear of, if I tell everyone everything I know, why would they hire me? Because they know it's, Telling someone what you know and someone doing it themselves are two very different things. So for example, if I give a bunch of tips, if I'm an attorney that helps startups and I'm constantly putting out content, helping startups, talking about the things they have to have in their master services agreement or other documents, that doesn't mean they don't need an attorney. It just means that 
I've already been valuable to them. And so when they go looking for an attorney, I'm going to be one of the ones they call to at least have a conversation with to consider hiring me. Yeah, I agree. I think some people are afraid of giving away their secret sauce, but listen, every, you know, everything's on, on the internet today. Right. Anyway, you could, you could find it. Uh, but if someone's content is so good to become a resource, and then when you need that person, you remember who helped you as being a, a free resource, right? I'm going to call you, or I'm going to call you, right? right? So, right. Um, no, it's a, a great thought, you know. And you know, I think of the Grateful Dead. Uh, you know, I used to go to their shows, and there's, there's a on Amazon. There's a great documentary about them right now, and they were, you know, that um, their fans were, you know, would bring their tape recorders back in the day, right, and tape the right. show. They're called bootlegs, and everybody. You know, all the business people are like, oh, my God, how can you do that? That's, you know, like they're stealing your music. And, you know, Jerry, Bob, Phil, everybody were like, ah, let them do it. And they they really they didn't have any ulterior motive besides the fact like, let them do it. <laughs> right. You know, and, well, you know, as you probably know, these cassettes got, you know, uh, 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 duplicated over and over and over again. And then their music spread more and more and more right. to the point where they became the the. Uh, the highest grossing at that time touring band ever in the history of, right. of rock. I mean, right? it's, it's, it's a great analogy. Hearing somebody sing on a CD or a tape is not the same as being in, seeing them live. And so yeah. you can, you can enjoy the CD over and over and over again, but it doesn't mean you don't want to be at the event. And yeah. so yeah. for us as, as for us as business owners, it's okay to help be helpful. And in fact, I think it's critical to be helpful the question you should be asking yourself is, if I'm putting out content, how is that helping my prospect be better at their job today? Yeah. And the more I can help them be better at their job before they hire me, the more confident they're going to be, I can help them be better at their job after they hire me. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's like I'm, I'm loving Drew's content uh, and now I need these services. Uh, right. Now I now want I'm now I'm going to go to a workshop or now I'm going to hire him for a consulting gig or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I want the... I want the Drew experience, right? Right, so, right. You know, yep. people have bags of Starbucks in their house, but they still go to the Starbucks location, right? So, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, no, that's fantastic. Um, that is great advice. So, so here, here's a challenging question, right? So you're talking about finding a niche, which I totally agree with, right? I love the saying, there's, there's riches and niches. Now, this mm -hmm. pandemic, you know, some people who relied on niches got screwed because that niche, like, got completely halted. Like, so but, for instance, but, if your business, you know, relied but, on, on travel, no, right? No, 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 no. That's the perfect example. Nicole Mahoney's agency specializes in travel. They do. And when, and, and they, like every other agency had a really tough second quarter, but when the brands were ready to come back, you know who they wanted? They wanted Nicole. a specialist Yeah. and they wanted Nicole. And so Nicole Nicole, Nicole got back on her feet much faster than a lot of generalist agencies did because she specialized. And so the art here's, I have this, I have this debate every day with folks and here's the reality. Every 10 years, great recession, pandemic, every 10 years, we have a huge economic sort of crunch. You can make a ton of money in those nine years by being a specialist. You can charge a premium price, you can say no to the wrong kind of customers so your customers stay longer. There's all kinds of value in being a specialist. And in the year when everyone is feeling the economic crunch, generalists and specialists alike, you're going to feel it, absolutely. But you're going to come out of it faster and stronger because you're a specialist. There is, there is, no, there is no proof, I have yet to see it, where a generalist is better off than a specialist. As a specialist, Nicole can work with travel clients anywhere in the world and does. She can charge a premium price because she understands the industry better than any generalist can. She gets invited to speak at conferences. She has a great podcast. She's working on all kinds of other projects all because she's a specialist. And this is not agency centric. Anybody listening who is a business owner, I guarantee you that there are some luxuries that come with being a specialist regardless of what you do, that you give up as a generalist. And so the question is, I believe there is, the riches and the niches are, you're going to go a mile deep, but only an inch wide, but you're going to charge one and a half times more than your competitors are. And your clients are going to start knocking on your door. The more 
famous you are as an authority, the more what happens is, again, you're findable and then you're sought after. So your whole biz dev, your, your effort to get new clients gets truncated because now they're coming to you. So you're not going to find them. They're coming to you and want to buy what you have to sell because you've been so helpful. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful answer. Yeah. I love it. I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> yeah, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you used travel as the example because I was going to say, since we've already talked about Nicole, let me yep. give you a concrete example. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fantastic. So yeah, you, you become a, a, a deep expert in that field. And when it bounces back, you're, you're the one that they're going to go to. I love it. Well, and I think um, what Nicole and many other businesses did during the pandemic was they stepped up how helpful they were. They stepped up their content creation. They knew that their clients and their prospects weren't going to be spending money with them for a month or two while they sort of got their feet under them during, you know, in March and April of 2020. Yeah. But they also realized that if they were super helpful in that time, when everybody was in a panic, that when those brands were ready to hire someone again, they would go immediately to somebody who had been their savior and their life vest for the last two months. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. So, yeah. you know, that's the other opportunity that we have as business owners is the more helpful you are in times of difficulty or crisis or downturn, when those prospects get back on their feet and they're going to, we know that financial things are always come in cycles. When they get back on their feet, they're going to remember who helped them. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. I love it. And Nicole is such a calming force of nature to begin with. Uh, and yes, and just yeah. to her like riding out the storm in that way, I'm sure it was very beneficial to her. So uh, no, great lesson there. I really appreciate it, Drew. Very helpful to all of our audience too. So, you know, let this to recap lesson. So, you know, Gonzo family, you own a, a small business, medium-sized business. Uh, what is your specialty? What are, what are you known for, right? If I wake up in the middle of the night and I say, what do you do? You know, can you tell me in one or two sentences how you're specifically helping people in a, in a very defined niche? Um, and I think that's fantastic. Um, so, all right. So now to the fun part, Drew. Uh, I have a couple of fun questions here. Uh, books that you would recommend, some of your favorite books for uh, small business entrepreneurs. Yeah. So my all-time favorite business book is a book called The Radical Leap by Steve Farber. Hmm. Um, it is a business parable. And um, it is it is fantastic. I, Steve has written several great books, all of which I love, but that's my favorite. Um, there's another great book, and it's an older book called Selling the Invisible. So if you're a if you're a, a B2B business that sells something intangible like business services, the book Selling the Invisible by a guy named Harry Beckwith, B-E-C-K-W-I-T-H, is a fantastic read. Um, an interesting book about niching um, is also a book that's been around for a little while called Becoming a Category of One by a guy named Joe Calloway. Mm -hmm. All three of those books are, I think, must reads for anybody who owns a business. I think you're the first person that ever threw out not only one, but three books that I've never heard of. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check them, check them out. They're all fantastic reads. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to go visit Audible after this. I appreciate yep. it. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, then do you, is that part of your, your daily weekly habits is to do some reading? Oh, absolutely. I probably consume a book or two a week. Wow. Um, but, but my rule is, um, one business book and then one fiction book. I have to sort of cleanse my palate in yeah. between business books just to sort of give my brain a rest. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, and I'm an audible, I like you, I'm an audible guy. So, you know, I'm listening while I'm walking the dogs or doing whatever, but, uh, a couple yeah. books a week. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I got to read more fiction books. I haven't done a good fiction book in a while. So, um, excellent. So, um, last but not least, fun question. If you could go back in time and uh, hang out with somebody that you are not related to, who would that be? No, it's an easy one for me. It would be Walt Disney. So, uh, I think he is the most brilliant uh, business owner and visionary that has been in existence in our lifetime. I think the persistence at which he pursued his dreams, despite being told no a million times. Uh, and after having his IP stolen and you know his employees went on strike, I mean, he just, he should have given up so many times. And instead he built probably one of the greatest brands on the planet 
um, I, I would love to hang out with him and, and just pepper him with questions about his motivation and how he stayed positive when everybody else was, you know, sort of telling him no. Uh, I just think he was a, I think he was a remarkable business person yeah. and, a, and, a, and a great dad, which I also admire. Yeah. 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 That's a great one. That's a great one. Well, you might be able to hang out with him someday. Didn't he, uh, didn't he like freeze himself so when that technology comes about, we can. Yeah. That, that is a myth, but yes. <laughs> is it a myth? Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all, all of him is buried, uh, you know, Oh, uh, you next, just next next to his bride. You just yep. busted that myth. All right. Yep, just, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, Drew McClellan, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and, and sharing your wisdom and nuggets with us. People want to reach out to you and learn more and, and maybe talk to you a little bit about how, what's the best way to do that. Yeah. So I'm pretty easy to find uh, on social media everywhere. My username is Drew McClellan and McClellan is M-C-L-E-L-L-A-N. So one C, no D. Uh, and then uh, you can re- email me at drew at agencymanagementinstitute.com. And I'm always happy to connect with people on social channels on LinkedIn. And uh, this is a topic that I feel pretty strongly about. So always happy to engage in a conversation. Great. Drew, thank you so much. Truly appreciate your time and what you're doing for the world. You bet. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Thank you, Gonzo family. We appreciate you listening. We'll be back next Wednesday.